I've yet to see it in action. It's better work. Yeah, it's better work. I love playing airsoft. For those of you who don't know, airsoft is kind of like paintball, except you shoot little plastic BBs instead of paintballs. I've been wanting to make like a massive airsoft gun that just blasts like 100 BBs downrange. It's going to be as many working gas blowback pistols as we have in the office stacked together. It sounds like a good concept for a video. So we're gonna build it, hopefully it works, hopefully it don't break all our guns, and then we're going to test it. Oh. And we're gonna film it all in slow motion when it happens. You know the ironic part about working here at Corridor is I don't I don't like guns. I'm willing to bet none of these work. I mean, how many pistols do we have? We got eight, 13, 18, 22, 30, 34, 38. 40 airsoft pistols. And we have no idea how many work, and we have to find out which ones work. This gun's like completely broken. This doesn't have a magazine. This gun should just be thrown away. Ow! Mayday. Half of these guns have a BB lodged in them. No, don't shoot me! There was a BB in that! Oh, okay. Nick. All you guys saying that we're mistreating these guns, you're right. I don't give up. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> What's going on? Go through all the pistols that we could find. You don't have that many? I mean, these are all jank and don't work. So we have 11 guns right now that are functional. How many do you and Sam have in your personal stash? Yeah, three or four. You're telling me we just have guns hidden? Yeah, these are not for anybody to use except for me. Yeah, did you guys know that Ren is branded? He has a brand on him. And it's just one of those like hardware store S hooks. <laughs> Heated up in what, like a fireplace? No, a blowtorch. I have been thinking a little bit about like how we actually mount all the guns up to be able to pull the trigger on all of them at the same time. So instead of sliding a rod through all of the trigger holes, let's put strings attached to all the trigger holes and put those onto a rod. Get the rod in a certain place and we can tie each string individually until it's taut. Pull the rod and it'll pull all the strings at the same time. Might take a little bit of setup time to build it. I've been wanting to make a airsoft blaster for a long time. 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 guns. All right, so now we need to build a rig for all this. We need to start with that process. Ren, you are the engineering mastermind here. You're on your own. You're abandoning me right now. I have to go film video games. It's this gonna be janky. That's what I like to hear. Hey guys, thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video because without them, we wouldn't be able to make Smeller. That's right, as I told you in the last video, what we've done is gone out and created the world's first take a picture and find out what it smells like app. That's right, and with their beautiful award-winning templates that are flexible for any kind of website, we made Smeller, and it's fantastic, okay? We took it up to Silicon Valley just last week. We met with some joint venture capitalists. They told us that our foundational technology you know, it might be fundamentally terrible, but I think we're gonna be past that in about three to six months, and I gotta say, we're gonna bring it back to them, they're gonna be real excited. If you guys are looking to make a smeller of your own, consider Squarespace. It's an all-in-one platform that you never have to update, and of course, it's got 24-7 customer service. So head on over to squarespace.com slash Sam and Nico, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Also be on the lookout for the next iteration of Smeller, smell -a vision Brand new day, brand new wood. We're gonna go make a mount for all of these guns. We are gonna basically just use one of these as a board that all of the guns will be mounted on. And then the other half of the board will chop into small little parts, yay big, and then just screw this into the other board. So what you'll end up with is just like, it'll look like a comb, kind of, like a giant comb made out of two by fours. So that's step one, right? Is to make the comb layout of the frame. And then we'll attach all the guns, probably just using gaff tape. But we also have to find out some sort of way to mount this so that it doesn't fall over. Bridger, yeah. you wanna shoot this gun? Sure, I love guns. You love guns? <laughs> no. Have you ever shot a gun? Once. All right. I hope all right, it's so back. This is the... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I got shot. The rig is complete. Yeah. Okay, so I, I've rigged the first two guns up. And now I'm just gonna test them to see if they actually work. Safety is off on both guns. We are live. Three, two, one. Nice. 
It works. Now we're just gonna put all the rest of the guns on. How are we doing, Ren? Uh, we're doing all right. So the 1911s have like this little grip safety feature that you have to be holding it in order for it to fire. It's just like a little switch at the back here. So I'm just kind of going along and uh, taping those closed. And this time I'm going to make sure I don't hold down the trigger while I do it. This is even crazier than the spinning gun rig from Breaking Bad. I don't know about that. That was pretty crazy. And that actually killed people. Fictionally, anyway. <laughs> Before you start clacking away on your keyboard and ridiculing us for our gun safety, know that I agree with you. This is absurd. We have all the guns mounted. We have all the strings attached. Now we gotta figure out the trigger mechanism. And what we've devised here is actually just taking an entire piece of two by four. We're gonna attach these door hinges, just like this. The purpose of that is so that it can rotate around a fixed point as opposed to just arbitrarily pulling on it. And maybe I pull a little bit too much on this side rather than here. We might get some inconsistent trigger pulls. So the hinges will keep it entirely consistent along the entire board here so that it can just rotate back. Pa! and fire all the guns at once. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put screws into each of these things here so that we can wrap the string around and then secure this in place. So that way we're relying on the screw to be the acting point for the string rather than tape. I'm starting to get excited, man. I think this is gonna work really well. Sam and I went to YouTube with everything we had. I guess you could say that I thought it would work out. Mm, I'd say that our days are never the same here at Corridor, but I think my favorite part is after all the stress and the planning and getting a video shoot ready, when you wake up on that shoot day and you get there and you get your first shot off, that's the best part. We wanted to do a new format that would allow for us to experiment with things. This format is a great way to do that because it's regular, it allows for for you to have a crazy idea and go, hey, this is something I wanna try. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. If I could only use one lens for the rest of my life, I would choose a nice 50 millimeter prime lens that opens to at least 1.5. You don't get a lot of warping on the sides, and it's not like a extreme telephoto lens where it compresses the space too much. It's a nice medium. Personally, when I'm shooting something, like at least 80% of my shots are on a 50, and I just move the camera 50 millimeter all the way. I was wondering how Ren got into VFX, and if he has any tips for someone who wants to get into the business. 2009, and I was just on my computer, and I, I, I was using this website called StumbleUpon. I stumbled upon this website called videocopilot.net. And I was like, whoa, that's interesting. It was this, this demon face tutorial. So I watched the whole tutorial, it was like 40 minutes long. I honestly didn't even know you could do visual effects on your home computer. I only had a laptop at the time, so I ended up spending the next few months watching every single tutorial on that website when I should have probably been studying. That was how I got into visual effects. I just watched a whole crap ton of tutorials. Watch the tutorials to figure out what buttons to press, but then come up with your own ideas and figure out how to get from point A to point B. Do little videos, kind of get ambitious with your ideas. When you do that enough times and you work on enough videos, suddenly your skill set's getting big enough that you're like, hey, I think I know how to do this now. How do you guys stay motivated to make content even with all the roadblocks of YouTube's current state? Oof. Staying motivated in the YouTube atmosphere all just comes down to forgetting about the business aspects of it. Like forgetting about trying to monetize your videos and just 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 trying to make it just about the video. Just to the enjoyment of making good content. That's how I stay motivated. Motivated, and that's how we, we we envision our content moving forwards. If you need to refresh your mind, I recommend you just listen to your instincts and your urges. If you feel like being lazy and play, playing video games, then be lazy and play video games. If you like traveling, if you like getting out there, go do it. Just listen to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I've learned so much more about it, and I've learned that there are other elements of filmmaking that I enjoy more than what first got my hands on the camera. A lot of those things I still enjoy, but there's things I enjoy even more. What's a corridor goal for 2018? Corridor goal for 2018 is to shoot our very first movie. Make a real movie, not some web series, not some webisodes. Uh, make an actual movie. What's your favorite ice cream flavor, Obi? Pie or cake? Pie, all day. I'll even give you top three. Apple, pumpkin, and cheese. Cake is a cake, it's not a pie. Oh shoot, I messed up that answer. Nick, I think we finished it. We finished the build. And this is a Frankenstein of a project. I love it. Look at this. This is the setup. We rotate this back and it should pull on all of them evenly and they'll all fire at the same time. <laughs> There's a considerably 
like far higher degree of effort than I was expecting. <laughs> well, this is the minimum amount of effort required for this to even work. They're all loaded right now. Yes, they are all they loaded. Are all literally all... ready to go. This is very well thought out, Ren. So is this how you imagined it? This is better than I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> are you cold, Nico? Just so I don't get hit in the teeth. I've yet to see it in action, so maybe it's worse than I imagined. We'll find out. Let's, the real test is about to about to happen. Some of these triggers have more play than others, so you have to just keep pulling until they've all fired. That's my plan. I'm ready. I'm ready. All the safeties are go. All right, ready? Yep. Countdown. In a three, two, one. <laughs> so this one fired? Six fired. This one fired. This one did not. So I think I know the, the problem. I, uh, I was trying to pull it just from one point here. What I need to do is I need to pull it from two separate points like this. Yeah, yeah get over there, Nick. Get a good shot of this. Is everyone ready? And three, two, one. Ow! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did it work? Did they all go off? Boo! The Nick shot. Ah! <laughs> That was fantastic. I think we're done testing, and I think we can move on to actually shooting people. Hey, Ren, who do you want to be your first victim? Everyone should get in front of the guns except for me, because I'm going to pull the trigger. <laughs> yeah. Everyone except for you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Who's going to pull the trigger? OK, Ren. <laughs> OK. Dude, I've been shot with so many BBs at this point. It's going to be like a feather just tickling me. <laughs> hey, guys, we got something really cool to show you out in the backyard. <laughs> This better work. Yeah, this better work. Damn, son. Oh my gosh. You rigged a whole firing system? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. All right, everyone get up there. You guys in my face. If it's not going to be able to kill multiple Rocket. people at once, then what's the point? <laughs> you know? That's true. I wouldn't feel confident shooting it at somebody if I didn't know what the damage was. Yeah. Do not take your masks off for any reason, even after the gun's fired, please. Push in. This thing is not, not going to shoot that wide. Off. I'm going to scream. So Carmichael will call it. Death, you are my bitch lover! Three, two, one! Oh! 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 I got hit in the neck. Oh! Oh! Multiple, multiple times. times. Yeah. <laughs> Should I get in front? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh yeah, just just you. Yeah, here we go. Oh my god. Three, two. That's cool. Uh, was that that everything? really good. Nico destroyed my iPhone with an arrow. He uh, forfeited burritos to everyone. <laughs> We're gonna lose out on burritos. All right, sorry. Deal with some stuff. Nick, it's time. Woo! Throw that salad away, buddy. I know, a burrito. Can't replace a phone. Well, maybe a burrito can replace a phone if it's good enough, right? You guys are gonna make these burritos expensive, man. Okay. Yeah, there's no truck. Well, that sucks. Had a chance to try out our Metal Gear Solid game type where we blind ourselves, plug our ears, and try and sneak around. The second video has just been released on Note. If you guys want to see how all this stuff turned out, go check those videos out right now. There's links all over the place. And they actually, it turned out really, really well. It was different than I expected, but it was really fun, really funny, and I think it made some really good videos. So check it out.